a pertinent question has come up because of the supreme court ruling and obviously we are all concerned and therefore we have a very very uh, illustrated uh, illustrious panel with us uh, which we are going to i will introduce to uh, to you all of them but i must just uh, before we start i want to just define architecture i put picked up some uh, definitions of architecture architecture is both the process and the product of planning designing and constructing it's a collaborative <clears throat> process another definition says an architect plans designs and oversees the construction of buildings another one says the art and science of designing buildings and structures so yeah we have definitions but uh, it shows that it is a collaborative process it shows that it encompasses uh, conceptualizing a design and overseeing the construction of that structure uh, we have let me introduce the panel to you now uh, can i yeah so we have with us uh, mr abib khan president of the council of architecture we have with us uh, mr mahesh mudda managing director and ceo nccl india we have <clears throat> Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani, who will just join us a little later. He is the co-founder and managing director of Hiranandani, Hiranandani Developers. Mr. Rajiv Mishra, principal at the JJ College of Architecture. We have Mr. Sanjay Puri, owner and principal architect of Sanjay Puri Architects. And we have Mr. Subodh Dikshit, president, construction, Shapurji Palanji Group, and executive director, engineering and construction. So welcome to the panel. Thank you for joining us. I think uh, uh, thank you for taking the time because all of us here we are, um, you know, more than probably near about 2,000 people wanting to know the answers to the question that has arisen from the Supreme Court. But just before that, it's a little bit about me. So I had this company which publishes this magazine, Construction World, uh, 22 years in running. Uh, circulated around 800 cities in India. Uh, we have uh, been celebrating architects and builders for several 17 years, 16, 17 years. And uh, we always felicitate them with awards. And the nominations for noteworthy projects is on. You can apply at cwabawards.com. So that's uh, a little bit about us. This webinar is uh, powered by JSW Cement, as you can see the logo up there on the top left. So here's the agenda. Will the Supreme Court ruling make qualified architects irrelevant? Is there a cause for worry for students? Uh, I'd like to take this question to Mr. Habib Khan, who's the president of Council of Architecture. Uh, Mr. Khan, would you address this question? Yeah. See, actually, what has happened is, okay, I don't, I don't think any difference has happened with the Supreme Court ruling. The writing was always there since 1972 when the Act was made, and the sky hasn't fallen with the Supreme Court judgment. Supreme Court has only interpreted what is written in the Act. So I don't think it's the situation is going to make any difference, or there's going to be any, any, any difference at all for students or for architects at all. See, in 72 when the Act was enacted, there were about a handful of architects and few architectural colleges. In these last 40, 50 years, we have now one lakh plus architects in the country, and we have about uh, 465 institutions. So the profession has grown, you know, and grown leaps and bounds in spite of the act, which is there. The Supreme Court has just interpreted what is written in the act. So I don't think, I don't see, see any, any difference happening to anyone, actually. There's nothing to be so pessimistic or negative about it. So let's see what the Supreme Court says. Uh, ruling says that the, uh, it, the Architects Act does not prohibit individuals not registered under the Act to undertake the practice of architecture. Uh, the government cannot promote or recruit individuals who do not hold a degree in architecture recognized by the Architects Act to a post that uses the title and style of architect. So there is a restriction also which is uh, given by the Supreme Court. Although it does not prohibit, so you need to read. Degree. See, Pratap, you need to you need to read the judgment in totality. See, it's a 40, okay. 42 page judgment. If you read it in totality, you'll understand that the, the judges have been very clear in stating.
point number 27 if you see the object and purpose of the act is to prevent untrained individuals from designing supervising and constructing buildings and the registration ensures that the qualified architect only does this but unfortunately in section 37 which does not restrict the practice of architects no that is that's what the issue is it is a matter of few words here and there which we need to work on actually so the court okay. judgment has very clearly said in many places not only the supreme court but the high courts earlier have also said the same thing that is very it is very and that the the section 37 actually defeats the purpose of the act itself which actually prohibits untrained individuals from practicing architecture okay so there's uh -huh. a there's a small little contradiction which has actually led to this we need to look into this very clearly and very objectively uh mr mishra would you like to add something to this can you hear me hello yes yeah i would only agree with uh, habib khan sir the only thing is people think that they can practice like an architect but they cannot call themselves or use the title architect all the activities that has been happening in the building is basically confused as what an architect does so i guess the council of architecture is working towards reforming its act and trying to correct it because i think what supreme court has given as part of its judgment is actually what is written in the act the supreme court does not legislate it only reads what is the legislation and only what they have done is uh, and the interpretation of the legislation so i think it is a part of the supreme court legislation interpretation which needs to be refined recorrected reformed by either a petition review by the council of architecture or by reviewing the entire case as we feel yeah. the so students need not can worry you, about it can i Mr. can Khan, i, I think you, you, yeah one sec uh, you know this president's message that i put on the screen uh, right. here it says that uh, with the increasing complexity and evolution of technology tools and concepts there is a need to revisit architecture as a subject uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that we need to actually define what an architect needs to do as, and, and can the Supreme Court actually say that very clearly rather than leave, leaving it ambiguous? See, in all colleges of architecture, as well as the syllabus taught by the universities, the comprehensive services that is done by architects is actually taught at various years of study. Right from the first year to final year, you are actually going through all the subjects that is required of an architect to coordinate a project from concept to realization. So there is a working drawing which he learns, there's a quantity survey he learns, he knows how to prepare a tender and invite it. He knows what is a book of quantities, he understands the DSR. It is only that some people who are working as consultants to this architect and giving services might construe themselves to be architects and misuse the title architect. And that is what the problem is. And I think when president is trying to say there's a need to revisit architecture as a subject, I guess he is only trying to clarify that we should be very clear about the architectural services and the comprehensive services. So students are actually taught. See, I mean, see taught. Let, let us understand. Huh? Let us understand one thing very clearly that when the act was enacted in 1972, the complexity of the profession was very simple. There was, there was no complexity at all at that time. In fact, people right. didn't know what architecture was and what, what does an architect do. But it has evolved over a long period of time in these last 50 years. And we need to actually revisit the scope of architectural services. We need to relook at what an architect does and bring suitable amendments or changes to the written act. And that is what this sentence actually means. If you read the whole sentence, this calls for legislative changes okay. for which we shall strive hard. So are yes, we going to appeal, right. Mr. Khan? Yeah. Are we going to appeal? Pardon, can you say Supreme it again? Court? Are we going to See, appeal to the Supreme Court? Appeal is a very, uh, yes, 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 we are working on it. We are working with our uh, lawyers, senior lawyers who are working on it. We feel that there are certain issues and certain clauses which were overlooked by the, by the uh, bench, which we feel, but we're taking legal opinion on it. See, it was a two judge bench, uh, uh, two judge bench, and to appeal against a two, two, judge, two, judge, two bench judge, it's not easy actually you know it, it needs a lot of uh, thought process and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of work that needs to be done 
to convince for appeal but we are going to file for an appeal that is for sure we are working on it and very soon after the lockdown is over we will be filing the appeal okay i think uh, for the audience uh, there is a poll now does the value proposition of the architecture course need a revision so you you all all the attendees panel at, uh, all the attendees of, of the webinar you have a panel where you can see the poll question there and you can actually say yes or no and therefore we know what the trend of thought of the audience is on this matter I give you 20 seconds to just uh, finish voting for this poll. Okay, right now we have a sense of, of a balanced view on this matter. Okay, so yeah, like we said, here is the uh, we have 110,000 registered architects in India and Maharashtra having maximum, and followed by Tamil Nadu, etc. As you can see on the screen. So I think that that brings us to the next question: that what will be the, that? This is another poll. What will be the impact of ruling on the formula architecture practice? will architecture institutions become undervalued will a lot of substandard work enter the market or will the talent pool greatly improve and entrepreneurship entrepreneurship will be further encouraged please uh, vote for this poll also on your panel <clears throat> we will at appropriate times bring the answers to the poll to all of you so that you know what the general attendees felt you what happens is when you go and buy a pen in the market which is costing about 10 rupees can you hear me yes 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 so even yes, if it has a small scratch or something you know a small dent or a scratch or if it is damaged you don't buy it you know and here you are yeah. spending lakhs and lakhs of rupees you know few crores of rupees on a project and i don't think i mean the society and people at large are, are you know knowledgeable enough and wise enough not to not hire an architect you know and and uh, uh, it's, it's like you know uh, but mr khan there is another side to this and i would like mr mudda to come in here and whether you know the the fact that there are certain people who have by experience gained that knowledge and probably they are not certified themselves right they are still working in the industry and they are employed by various architects and architectural firms building firms mr mudda would you like to comment on this yes uh, thank you pratap uh, as you rightly said uh, experience uh, uh, engineers or people who are working but they're not qualified but that doesn't mean that the person doesn't know about the work and which has been happening for quite a long time uh, even supreme court judgment is uh, not saying anything other than that because uh, this is this judgment is not going to uh, discourage anybody because any good architect is going to definitely uh, survive and because do best students because who are coming because they're getting their education they need not have to worry about because their future because uh, there is no doubt of because work for the good guys so because uh, at the same time people who have been there for long time because uh, who are probably not qualified but then because definitely adding value but at the same time because the, nowhere because in the history in the past or because in present or in the future they will be termed as an architect qualified so it is very very clear that because there is no ambiguity into that but at the same time because if somebody is adding value to the profession person who has a great experience uh, in his own field who has been working all along who has been working as a certified agency uh, uh, unless there is a complete change in the act where because corporations few of the corporations like mumbai corporation and many of the other states they have been allowing this certified engineers to go and submit the plans and get the certification done which is the practice going on for ages now so suddenly we because you know worrying about that or putting a curb on that i don't think because that's what i think supreme court is saying so by 
respecting the judgment i think uh, there is no need for anybody to worry whether qualified or not qualified because qualified has rightly abhi uh, bhai told that because uh, by be aware sort of thing nobody is going, going to put their money down because they know exactly what they want uh, because when they are engaging somebody to you know or hiring somebody so is the question of certification yes because architect qualified architect only can because you know sign when it comes to that uh, mr dikshit would you like to comment on this please no yes this yeah uh, uh, let's let's put this in two different perspectives one is the supreme court judgment and i think supreme court judgment is as mr khan said purely to interpret the act whether you should be called architect if you are not qualified architect and whether in government organization you can put that as a designation for any post where you are not having a qualified architect as a uh, employee so the supreme court judgment is absolutely uh, interpretation of the act so also uh, since the act is there for last 50 years and nobody has really as uh, i assume nobody has really and specifically to the student pattern uh, i am talking uh, felt so far that there is a danger for their to advance their career so i think the fear which is being probably generated at this moment is uh, misplaced i think the issue the second issue is uh, as mr khan was saying that there is a uh, another uh, clause inside where does it allow the architect to use the services of supervision or uh, supervision or uh, let's say uh, 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 overseeing the project or the estimate of the project or work as a uh, project management i think there is a little disconnect here because what topic uh, from, can you hear me you can also hear me and the cross are you able to hear me so i, th- I think the issue is okay i think the issue here is now uh, students should not be really worried because uh, there is a plenty of work uh, the there are many many people and it is all in all professions where they somehow couldn't go into the uh, you know, rigors of going through a degree process but their uh, inbuilt strength or inbuilt uh, uh, what should i say talent preference is to talent yes talent to go into that particular area of work so i think that's a good thing and if you look at uh, from the legal point of view i think only qualified and registered architect should be uh, signing it and as mr padode said earlier that it architectural job is been in fact a collaborative job it is not one in uh, role with one person it can spaces you know there is a structural designer there is a electromechanical there is now some technology has gone uh, very advanced so can i can i interrupt here uh, for a minute sorry yeah can i interrupt yes. for a minute yeah yeah you see architectural education and architectural practice is art and technology which is subjective and which is objective any other person who is not trained as an architect can always work on the objective part of the practice or objective part of architecture but the subjective part which is the art in architecture the creativity in architecture needs to be inborn and needs to be learned and needs to be you know, uh, over a period of time owned and i i absolutely agree with you there's a so that's the part which we are worried about we what will be the quality of the See, if 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 you look at the world today, I think uh, we all know that will come out in the market. If I wouldn't, the train architect would, is not working on it. Okay, let's, that's let's, a, that's a question that we all we need to answer. I think let's understand this. Uh, uh, I wouldn't go in the specific name, but there are many many architects who have created wonderful designs. Um, those who are not qualified, but very really well known name in the world. So. i think there could be a uh, without degree a bent of mind where you can really develop creativity part of the uh, architecture and there are many many well very well known which are heard in the market by architect fraternity they are uh, uh, given very high regards to them 
So no, I think I, you know I, the I, question. Pratham ji, to sum up your question here, you know, because uh, I personally feel if uh, we respect uh, uh, each other, individuals who are uh, engaged into our profession, uh, degree is one. But at the same time, I'm saying because uh, as rightly because we have been discussing about it's a talent. If it is inborn talent, is there and if people have are adding value. Again, I'm repeating. Nobody is going to take any substandard because uh, when they are paying it, because they want the best out of everybody. So if somebody is complimenting, I think we must respect that. And it's a matter of time. I'm saying this has been going for ages. Now maybe it will slowly, slowly, slowly phase out because. People who are there today uh, are not qualified and they are doing these services for maybe 20, 30, 40 years. But uh, slowly we are seeing the trend because their own kids, they are qualified today. Person who is not qualified and working because his kids are not doing the same thing. So this is a matter of, I think, phase time, which we have to give the time and respect the each other and move ahead instead of, you know, because the, saying that, okay, let us not allow them to talk, uh, work or why we are allowing them or uh, they may take over, nobody can take over anybody's job. That's what I personally feel. So, Mr. Uh, Muda, I think, you know, here we are talking from the user industry perspective, and I think architects, uh, or the people from the profession of architecture could understand that here's what the user industry feels, because Mr. Mudda and Mr. Dixit represent the user industry, and if they feel that there is a, a sense of uh, experience and wisdom or a natural born talent in someone and who's not qualified and they are still comfortable. But uh, here I'd like to get Mr. Puri in. Uh, obviously, there can is I, a... I, before this, Mr. Puri comes in, shall I put one, one statement to add what okay. Mr. Muda is? Sure, Mr. Dick. See, what happens is, uh, I, I, I will just like to draw a parallel with uh, civil engineering or structural design. Okay. Now, there are many guys who are... Uh, not civil engineer, they are diploma holders, or there are some guys who have honed the skills of doing certain uh, quality works, not necessarily that they are structural designers, but they, then they can go to the next step by going for a vocational training program. And similarly, uh, uh, if some diploma holder wants to go up the ladder, he goes for AMI certifications. So anybody who is inclined to do architecture and his entire heart is in this art, by all means, he should try to go. I think how end users should be safeguarded is from the point of view how the authorities draw the rules of uh, approvals. It is not up to the individual whether he can really practice or not. Whether the rules prohibits him from submitting as an architectural design and it is approved or the government bodies or the municipal corporation, they create some kind of a uh, regulatory body which allows only qualified architects or structural designer or electromechanical guys to sign off on that because I'm very sure uh, I'm very sure that there would be individual architects also under whom there would be few architects working now if the individual architect is uh, say in case of Bombay Municipal Corporation registered as a qualified architect in the corporate then Whomsoever under him is working has created the drawing. The seal is from that individual architect. Similarly, if it is a corporate design office uh, or a large architectural design office, they may be having a staff of 100 people. All of them may not be the qualified architect. There could be some craftsmen, there could be some diploma, some, but they are pitching in and doing the work of architectural development in the form. But when the drawing goes for approval, I think it goes under the name of that company, which is which is registered and impaneled with the authorities. So I think the point is whether you want that individual architect to go and get impaneled without having the qualification. My take is the answer should be no. So you're right, Mr. Dixit. Yeah, I think uh, you know apart uh, from what you say, also completion certificates, occupancy certificates. Area certification, a lot of these areas uh, still require a qualified architect to actually certify. There are certain uh, states which have got owner and architect self, self certifications also. But so I would like Mr. Puri to come in here and, uh, you know, talk on this question that, you know, the I think finally it's the uh, responsibility also. It's a very responsible statement that an architect actually makes when he signs and certifies anything. So, uh, 
Mr. Puri, what do you, what is your view on this? See, my view is that exactly the way a doctor cannot just practice medicine without having qualifications and a doctor. It is the same way architects also cannot practice architecture. So yes, the ruling of the Supreme Court is good ruling in defending that fact, but that but the Supreme Court ruling very clearly says that a person at least cannot practice as an architect if he is not connected with the council. So that's a very clear thing. The number two thing is that the Council of Architects has to go ahead as it is planned and amend that act so that it encompasses all this. Back to that, that there are people, you know, who are not from the field and who are submitting plans and uh, getting things done. There was always a safe scenario for them that if they had worked in an architect's office for seven years, they were able to give an exam, you know, three years give another exam, and they can also get the qualification of architects. So in any case, it has been open to the rest of the world, but provided that that person has worked and been the experience in an architect's office and give those two exams, that person can also be. So it cannot be that anyone can start uh, submitting plans. So even so, this is this is one step. All the municipal corporations and this should be mandatory cannot have a non-qualified architect who is not registered with the Council of Architecture to be submitting plans anywhere in the country. There has to be one blank rule that applies to everything. And yes, the Council of Architecture can define what comes under architecture today, since there are so many allied fields which are also helping in the process. Everything from a physical engineer to structural engineer to uh, not moving and water supply. HVSC. So there are so many other components. But yes, when the plan goes, the plan goes because the architect is the only person who is coordinating all these things and putting it together. The engineer is not able to submit a plan, right? Because he has not understood the, the other aspect of it. So it, it's like even the medicine, there are specialists for each thing. So the thing is, the architect here is the overall person under which all these other things come. So it has to be that only an architect commits a plan, an architect is approval, an architect is titled and registered with the Council of Architecture, and it should be mandatory. And we can make this possible that everybody knows about this so that general people obviously so, will not go to a non qualified architect. You might be sure that. So, Sanjay. Uh, what you are essentially saying and drawing parallel to the medicine is, and then if we really try to interpret uh, both the acts, there it clearly says a, a person who is not a qualified doctor is barred from practicing. In uh, the Architect Act, it doesn't say that. So what you are suggesting is that the act needs, as Mr. Khan earlier uh, indicated, act right as it I looked at uh, in a manner that it was. So that is a separate thing. But what I am trying to say is, suppose there is a qualified doctor. Tomorrow he cannot work as a cardiologist. At the same time, unless he has, a, unless he has done an uh, advanced certification course of cardiology. Similarly, suppose there is a diploma, or suppose you want to call in your nomenclature, say junior architect or associate architect or whatever. I think it will be worthwhile considering a certification course for him to be called architect, like how a diploma civil engineer become uh, does AMI through uh, okay. in, uh, uh, engineering institutes and become a kind of a degree holder. So it is up to the authority to decide, and which I absolutely agree to that because the end user should not be uh, taken for granted who is the customer. Not even me and Mr. Mulga. See, but uh, we are also we are also giving to somebody who is going to occupy that premise. I think he is the end user, and he so should. So, this is let us let us understand Not one thing really. that any act, any act is made for the common people, protection yes. of the common people. So, even the Architects Act has been made because of that. That there is no fraudulent practices happening and no substandard work is happening. Absolutely, right. it should. So and you, currently and currently the Supreme Court has now said that you can't use the terminology architect in under any circumstance. So even if the person is well experienced, you cannot be addressing him as a junior architect or anything like that. 
and what mr puri is saying is that we must mandatorily ask the government departments to only accept uh, such plans and such certification from qualified architects uh, so no, but that, what that you are saying mr dikshit no, it doesn't that's what, that's what exactly i am saying so, so it is it is the strengthening of the government laws so that the end user the customer doesn't get you uh, know uh, a substandard product so if architect act Includes that uh, people should not be using uh, uh, the nomenclature of architect against their name. It also has a corollary to this that if suppose that guy uses architecture's name and submits a plan, whether he has been qualified by the government as per the law or legal requirement as an M panel architect, the answer should be no. If he is not having a degree, but that is a different case. Okay, I would like to share with you the poll results so far. So the first poll was, do you think that the ruling is uh, being uh, fair? So 70% feel it is not fair. Uh, is being fair? Yes. Yeah. Uh, is not being fair. Then does the value proposition need a revision? 90% said yes. The value proposition of the courses need a revision. And what will be the impact of the ruling on the formal practice? 25% feel that institutions will become undervalued. 53% feel a lot of substandard work will enter the market. But only 11% feel that talent pool will greatly improve or 10% feel that entrepreneurship will be encouraged. So, yeah, so that means people are feeling that this is, uh, this will, a uh, lot of substandard work. I think that people are divided on equally in terms of being 53%. But 25% feel that institutions will become undervalued. So 75% don't think that it'll, think, it'll make change. I think Pradhaar people are actually overreacting and, you know, getting depressed and getting hyper about things which, you know, which they shouldn't actually. The situation has been same since 72. There's no difference I'm, in I'm, the... I'm, 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 I'm absolutely. Fully agreement with uh, Shabir Khan because... Nothing has really changed because by the Supreme Court. Nothing has changed. I, I think it is only in the minds of people. See, okay, Absolutely. let me let me put this in context in another context. Since I am a chartered accountant and uh, we were having this discussion earlier that there are enough accountants who are very well experienced who manage the accounts of so many so many companies. They do their job perfectly well, but when it comes to signing of the balance sheet, only a qualified chartered accountant is uh, authorized to sign it's an annual clear. report. So it's there is a clear distinction there. between those who are qualified and those who are not qualified. And I think a similar such perception uh, will Should get created here. provided the architects can display that sort of... It's uh, already form. there. It's already there. Yeah. Most, yeah. Most, of the, most of the places it's already there. So Except very few. I mean, in some few corporations, in few corporations, you have a limit on which a non-architect can sign. You know, 300 square meters or 100 square meters. Depends on the city to city. But there, there are limits there. It's already there in place. But what you have now uh, just discussed brings us to this PCE thing that we were discussing earlier, professional qualifying examination, PQ, PQE. Professional qualifying examination, where you actually judge people on their qualifications and their expertise to practice as architects. What Sanjay was also talking about a little while ago. Right. Yes, and that's what exactly I am also saying. And as Pratap, uh, I was alluding to similar thing that suppose somebody has done first year of uh, chartered accountancy, but in that organization, he must be doing wonderful job until the uh, stage where signatures are required. And signatures are required, uh, it is signed by the certified uh, chartered accountant. So in the similar manner, if there's a guy who has a talent, who has uh, you know, a good flavor for doing the architecture and design, it's not really necessary that he should be allowed to, or rather he should not be allowed to submit and get the approvals. But of course, he can definitely work under somebody and get supervised by somebody who is an empaneled architect who can get his design used for approval. And in this, that sense, you this can... Brings Yes. It brings us to authorship of design. Yeah, I think that finally it boils down to the, that. Once we're signing... Uh, authorship of design, taking onus, taking onus of responsibility of your project is very important. 
and so that what is that will come question now uh, mr khan who who whom does the onus of responsibility fall upon the qualified architect, architect versus the yeah no no it's not and a the, question of qualified architect or non qualified architect it is a question of the taking authorship and onus of responsibility of the project that you're doing now most of the places it happens that the designer of the project or the architect of the project is someone else while in the municipal drawings where the responsibility and the ownership is someone else's someone else will sign maybe a licensing architect or some other architect or junior architect or whatever the reason may be so that has to go the architect who is designing the project has to take the onus of of the of, of the responsibility of the project that goes with it so when you call yourself an architect you need to take the responsibility as well of the project of the stability of the building of the correctness of the building and everything that is going into your building the architect has to take that onus and responsibility until that happens the quality of work will not improve can i can i can i pitch in yeah i think there are again two parts to this of course whatever intent architect had in doing the design also in collaboration with structural engineer and other the rest of the uh, specialists project management consultant who are also qualified as project management consultant let's say pmc it is up to the customer to engage some pmc on his behalf to oversee the whole job architect has obviously a responsibility to come and see whether it is being executed as per his uh, design and intent but there could be another project manager consultant who can do the whole thing of supervising the project in terms of costing in terms of billing in terms of each quality. consultant takes his own responsibility of course each and consultant takes the responsibility of the scope that he but see there are like any architects firm who takes the responsibility of everything even though he may be engaging some external structural consultant right who is right. so qualified some external electromechanical consultant who is also qualified external it expert who is also qualified but once he signs on the drawing i think he has also ensured himself that the services which he has taken from various people are qualified empaneled uh, uh, you know individuals or the agencies so once can i say no, something no so yes. actually we, we if mr khan we had earlier discussed that if they, we are going to get supreme court to actually lay down what exactly an architect is supposed to be doing and then only qualified architects can do that then i think this whole uh, confusion about we can't part tell the supreme court to do that but it is on the supreme court job is the job of the government the legislation legislation but it has not been defined no, as to supreme court will not define okay no. well, they only state that it is not defined the yeah. so supreme court will only allow the, the interpretation of Uh, uh, architectural because you know whatever the uh, law has been defined long time back so it's a different whole different process only here we are talking basically this ruling whether because today again because the, our whole discussion is around whether it, this is going to affect the uh, qualified architects and the non qualified architects our point is that yes because this has been going on all along this has not made any big change so because nobody is to really get worried about you even my request to mr raju mishra that uh, you need to address to all your students saying that because don't get perturbed or worried about because uh, the supreme court judgment is just not change anything because when no, we I'll, talk I'll, about i would like i would like then yeah, this right. is when we right. talk about a, when we talk about a building it's a architectural who is an artist because who is designing structural consultant who is the most important factor without but at most of the time because when we are constructing the buildings because at the design level when we are in all our team is in all we have seen structural consultant has made change the architectural design on n number of cases because architect architect is an artist you know he wants to make very beautiful building with lot of frills added to that but at times they are not practical so structural consultant was again is a very important then electrical then hvac then lift and because it's a Total, you know, all holistic approach when you do it, then because that building is ready. So, no, architect, sir, can I can I, I say something? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Sir, while teaching architecture to the students of architecture, we actually make them realize that they can imagine anything for which structural designer can possibly build anything. We actually want architects to think in a very imaginative way 
for which structural designers can find a solution. We don't think that for any design, structural design is not possible. Now, today with the coming technology, anything is possible. So we want them to think wide. We want to have most beautiful structures, aesthetic values, and we want people to enjoy architecture. Architecture is to be enjoyed by the civilizations. It cannot be done as a block of buildings just looking similar to each other. Okay. Perfect, architecture perfect. is meant to give pleasure. The, uh, the second thing. Okay. Can I, can, I, can I just introduce one poll before we go further? I, just a minute. Ask. So when we discuss that at some other point, we need to do not in this panel, but another panel discussion on the rules and the archives in the RAP. You know, today you are not allowed to handle from only two meters. And what kind of a rule is that if there is a structure certificate being given and the design is being verified, then why are you putting rules like you cannot put beyond two meters? Okay, I have a I have a take on this, on Mr. Mr. Yes. Before we, before, before we go for a, a poll, I have uh, because otherwise we lost, we lose the, the continuity. See, Mr. Yeah. Mishra, you are very right that architects uh, should be in all his imagination try to create beautiful structure, and no doubt about this. Everybody wants to doesn't want to see the block of buildings everywhere. I think what is important to understand is, and also with the today today's technology. Uh, anything which is possible uh, through uh, computers uh, and whatever the architect uh, uh, perceives, the structural consultant or structural designer will design also. We also need to look at the balance it should create between constructability and the cost aspect of that product. Hmm. So whether whether my, my imagination my imagination imagination could uh, you know uh, fly, and structural designer can. Uh, Probably in all uh, wisdom available with IT and all that, also design it safe. Whether but sir, ar architecture students are taught structures in the college, and this is what I I'm understand. trying to tell you. No, but so you will not think otherwise, which is not buildable. They are actually no, taught. That's what exactly I'm saying. Not them. buildable is another point, but whether it okay. is buildable at a right cost, I think that is another yeah. point. Right yeah. cost is See, time. That may, not be in the That's client choice. that may not be so, in the purview of the architect uh, because yeah. of cost decision yeah. or business decision would be somebody else's. Yeah. So, exactly. I would, I would, uh, let's okay. come back to the topic. Yeah. Just, just a minute. Uh, can just, just a minute. Can I, can I just tell this one poll is on? Yeah. Okay, the poll is already okay, been done. All right. So, we, we did a poll just now. There, who do you think this ruling benefits? And the options were licensed architects or talented design professionals, structural engineer, engineers, contractors, and all. And 32% uh, uh, felt that talented design professionals uh, were the ones who haven't been able to be certified naturally. It benefits them most. And 25% it benefits contractors. That's the next highest uh, number. And 11% uh, licensed architects and others. So obviously, people do feel. The talented design professionals and contractors get benefit because of this. Uh, yeah, but all I the like attendees, I, my request to all the attendees, my my request to all the attendees is they should actually read the Architects Act. They should actually read the judgment in full. Yeah, yeah. The Supreme Court judgment in full. Their opinion would change. I, yeah, I you think I, I I would say that Mr. What Mr. Khan is trying to say is that basically the status of the architect hasn't really changed with this ruling. It was an internal matter of the government that was being tried in the court in the case, which has uh, now got a ruling. And there, there, there were designations of architects being used in government departments, which needed to be clarified because there was a, a debate about whether a qualified architect can get that position or not. So it was an internal matter, which has got, which has just exploded into public view and uh, an internal matter of a government. By our own architects. Yeah. By our so, own fraternity. Correct. So really, yeah, I agree that there is no real worry for the students as such. But let's what let's look at what is the future for architects. How should the profession redefine itself? So can we have no, some can views here? That? Sanjay was saying Sir, something. I, Sanjay. Sanjay, yeah, please okay. now, please. I, you know, sir, I just wanted to say that yes, the students and young architects don't need to be disturbed by the ruling. 
But what we need to do is also go ahead and get the Civil Council of Architecture definition, the act, all of that approved so that it, it is not up to date today. It is high time. 72 and 2020, it's almost 60 years. So we need to amend it and let's do it now so that everything is nicely, properly defined once and for all. That's, that's, I think that's, that's what so we needed it to do. But you know, in the evolving structure, and this is to the panelists again, the, the whole building industry is evolving, digitalization has come about, you know, technologies like precast, etc. are happening. Now in the light of all this, how do you see the architecture profession redefine itself? Uh, Sanjay, what are you doing um, uh, in terms of uh, how uh, an architect, you know, what used to see situations 10, 15 years down the before and now, how do you see the change that is happening that architect, new architects need to actually uh, learn within their uh, profession. Yeah, so now actually there is a lot more scope for architects who are coming in here because they can take up one aspect of architecture and specialize in that if they want to. But when 20 years, 25 years, and you were doing everything, so the client looked at you for lighting, looked at you for landscape, looked at you for architecture, looked at you for planning everything. Even MEP consultants who saw that. Unless you're doing a large township, even the LEP and the plumbing and electrical were all given by architects only. But now you've got, you know, MEP consultants separate, acoustic consultants separate, landscape consultants separate, lighting consultants separate, how many consultants? But yet, the whole coordination is still being done by the architects. So, actually, the work has increased huge. You know, something that you could have done in house, but now you need to coordinate with so many people and then take. The structure person's feedback, put in the MEP. MEP guy says, I want to see and these beams. The structure guy says, No, I cannot have the this beam. And keep coordinating so that whole coordination process is a long process. But anyway, it's a good thing because there are specialized people in every field and it has become more specific, far more uh, detailed, and uh, far uh, less I, more for mistakes with BIM uh, and everything uh, coming into play. Also. I want to make a point here. There yes. are many organizations who are into total solution providing of a building, okay? And not necessarily headed by an architect. But they all have architects in that uh, organization, electromechanical guys in that organization, uh, IT related uh, talent in the organization, structural designer in that organization, and everything, whatever is required to create a in that setup of corporate architectural setup or whatever entity you want to call it. And suppose that entity is impaneled in a government department. By all means, he's, he is the CEO or MD or the owner. He is not necessarily architect. But the fundamental here is, I think a product comes out by the collaborative approach of all this expertise going into the product definition. So it is not necessary that only architectural act can define this. I think it is. it has got something very much beyond that. Mr. Khan, would you like to come in and tell us how uh, you are seeing the profession evolve? It is, it, you see, it has evolved and it's become more, more and more complex. Now, like Sanjay was just saying a little while ago, that you, there's so many other professionals that you need to collaborate on these days. In a project which is a very complex and a large scale project, we have about 20, 22 consultants working on the project itself, you know. But the coordination ultimately is done by the architect. He's a single point person who is coordinating the project when, when the drawing board stage, when it is being designed and conceived. There might be a PMC coming in who will probably coordinate the execution part of the project. So this situation is going to be like this for a while till a situation, a calamity like this, which has happened right now, uh, the corona virus covid 19 or whatever and then you are now you're forced to work from home the whole whole uh, uh, dynamics of your practice and the way you looked at your practice has changed you know so uh, we need to uh, i think we should we should come back to this when you go to ask questions on the covid thing but the, the practice is definitely going to change becoming more and more specialized and becoming more and more complex by the day and this is what we need to actually define and work out the it cannot be a watertight compartment, but definitely, yes, we need to have a relook at the way our practice is going to be henceforth. 
So, you know, we are having a lot of questions, Mr. Khan, coming up from people now. So uh, just before we start the questions, just quickly, I want everybody's take on this, uh, the pandemic that's impacted the our industries and what everybody if in, a, in one line can say about the impact and uh, what they expect, how is it going to sort of uh, ease up uh, post lockdown in terms of getting back to life? We can start with Mr. Khan. We need, uh, we need to have societies, model of societies, an economic model which is not based on stress and the rat race that we all are in. We need to have a happiness index now involved into these two aspects of how our societies would be henceforth and how the economic model should be should be you know worked out in such a manner that the happiness content is more important in, in the lives of people. Right. Mr. Mudda. Uh, yeah, we, with a lot of, we're talking about advancement and technology, with all that, because our industry is still dependent on a lot on the labor force, which is very, very critical and important. And uh, with this uh, COVID, you know, because uh, more than 50, 60% people, these are laborers out of fear, they're already gone. Maybe around 40, 50%, they're still there at site. We have been trying to take care of them best way because their food, their health, their, all the facilities. But the fear factor with this class of labor is very huge. With, uh, because I don't know, because till it settles, maybe April end or mid-May, we'll have the clarity. We need to gain over the confidence of this uh, labor, which is very, very, very critical for us. And we need them in large numbers. So government is putting there because a lot of efforts. We as an organization was putting a lot of efforts to retain them, educate them, guide them. But then uh, till all this settles, uh, there's going to be big setback and uh, time is being lost. Time is money, as we say. So it's going to have a big impact to the contractors, to the developers, to the end users uh, with their commercial buildings, whoever is involved. And uh, it's going to take a good amount of time to get back onto the track. Mr. Mishra? Yes, as regards to education, I can say that it has um, helped us in a very big way. It is now possible for us to share teaching resources. We can have an expert in services in some college who would actually online speak to all the students of all the colleges at one point time. You could save travel time. You could actually address students and give them one-to-one -one counseling at a given time after the college. And I think if we could reduce our contact hours in college physically, or if possibly you have not been able to meet your teacher, you can always maintain the contact later. So in a way, it has been a blessing. It has actually helped teachers and students think about new ways of learning and then always meet up later, either in library or in classroom to take it ahead. As far as site visits are concerned, as, as, as far as going to every meeting is concerned, it is not possible to travel because we are in different directions, but you can always now attend many meetings online, which I think is a good thing for administrators and teachers, which will help students in a long way. Mr. Sanjay Puri. So this was a wrong way to learn something because a lot of people have suffered. But I think two things that really need to be done post this is by every construction site which has office of a certain size and nature, it has to be mandated to provide really good work of along the cafeteria and a small medical facility in the case of uh, not just this, this just that work needs to be provided for it's really important. Of course, there are large number of small sites where it's not possible. So there have to be separate workers housing units all across the country, everywhere, especially in urban areas. And number two, I think that because people are forced to actually do meetings like this webinar, a lot of people who had a mental block of Across and doing a virtual meeting is now gone, and therefore I see that there's a number of uh, you know webinars, the connections between the office right, are going to be way better in the future, and that will reduce the amount of traffic, it will reduce the amount of flights being taken, it will reduce the amount of cars in the room. So, in that respect, like a lot, and networking is a very, very important thing. So, conferencing facilities in every single building, residential, offices, everywhere. It's going to be of prime importance. 
Mr. Dixit? Uh, if you look for the, uh, from the industry perspective, I think uh, as uh, Mr. Muda also mentioned, we have uh, very much relied on the migrant laborers. And also construction industry is a very, very cash stressed industry. So post COVID, as it is in this last three, four months, whatever impact is there, last one and a half year uh, construction industry and the real estate and all that is going through a lot of stretch. Uh, I think it will take another six months, even if the situation becomes normal from say May, to really come back on the feet. Because cash is going to be a very, very important factor for construction industry to get revived. So this is one part as far as the construction industry is concerned. I have also liked the idea of what Mr. Khan said, that I think this is one thing which is in blessing from the point of view that how do we really create architectural in a manner that the community is confined at the same time they have all this quotient available to them, whether it is a social infrastructure or whether it is happiness infrastructure or whether it is educational infrastructure and so on and so forth. Good thought. I don't know how long it will take to really materialize uh, on that concept. I think it, it is a combined effort which has to come from all the stakeholders, including the government. And it, is, it has been our yes. it has been our and, greed that we have you know trampled nature and Mother Earth, and we need to really really look at it. I mean, maybe a wrong way, but that's the way nature is teaching us. To how to live our lives henceforth. I think all said and done, I think it's a great time for people to be learning. So I think being a student at this time during this year, if if any one year has to be sacrificed in business, I think it's better to be a student. So those who are not <laughs> students can learn, and those who are students are in a great place. Or or Mr. Padabre, all of us in the profession can become student today. Yeah. And that's what exactly we are trying to do. Reflect reflecting on how and what has happened to our business in the past and how do we come out of this situation by learning from those mistakes or the setbacks and do better strategies for the future i think this is a good time to reflect on that okay uh, i have some i have some lots of questions here but i'm trying to summarize certain questions so that maximum people can be answered <clears throat> a lot of people are uh, talking about uh, being trained professionals, but not getting certification. So uh, they're all concerned that just like a trained yeah. nurse can can they, there can be a executive certification or something because the person has the uh, has the knowledge, know-how, experience, <clears throat> workability, and can that person get some sort of a executive development program or something in architecture so that he can he or she can qualify and therefore become a resource in the profession. I think a lot of people are talking about this, uh, which obviously uh, again precludes the fact that you need only qualified architects to be. That means there is a need. Is there a need for trained, experienced people who have the talent to get certified and therefore be in the talent pool uh, with that certain qualification, which may not be the ultimate architect qualification, but somewhere uh, below that, uh, yet allows them to. You know, get into the practice. At the moment, no. Okay, there is nothing like that. Yeah, at the moment, no. Think... And there's nothing. Maybe in the uh, PQE professional qualifying examination, maybe this this can be looked into, but not at the moment. Can I say something? Then I think. Sir? Yeah. Go ahead. See what happens is, uh, you know, there are many people who want to become painters and sculptors when it comes to JJ School of Art, where I teach, right? So what we have done is those talented professionals who want to learn painting, who want to learn sculpture, we have started hobby classes for them. Okay, you can learn something on your own, practice on your own, but you cannot call yourself a qualified painter. You know painting, you know something about painting. Similarly, we have started quality improvement programs for practicing architects who want to improve their chances of getting projects on historical preservation of old buildings. Conservation architects are actually trained how to do this, but there are many architects who are into building repairs, but would like to know how to conserve historic buildings. So we have certain 
tailor made courses for practicing architects but not for talented design professionals who might use this certificate and call themselves that they know a bit more about architecture than other architects so i feel we do not have anything like this council of architecture is uh, preparing a lot of courses for training teachers for training young architects into it but not for talented design professionals we have orientation courses on architecture and art but not for giving any certificates no, but Raji, there is no risk there is no restriction or bar on they not yeah. coming and joining those courses there is no restriction on that yeah they can but then they cannot any talented design professional can yeah no talented design professional is not my problem the only problem is if you are talented enough why don't you give indian institute of architects right. professional examinations and get registered right. yourself as architects that's it nothing else right. okay we right. have uh, five minutes more to go there is a poll right now on your screen uh, whether just to know whether as a design professional how do you source your product information so uh, the attendees can uh, look at the poll Mean meanwhile i am raising another question that the audience has asked that can you can something more be done on the awareness about architects and architecture as a layman knows about doctors and lawyers but for architects masses are not aware i think uh, what there is also a reference some people make is that you know one doesn't know which architect has built which building and that kind of thing is not very common knowledge and neither do people talk about this as much as they ought to so there are needs to be some sort of a mass communication it's a, it's a very, program it's a very valid it's promo is a very valid uh, pradeep is a very valid uh, question yeah. and then a very so, pertinent point which has been raised the awareness yes. of architecture has to increase in society and it has to happen right at the school level the council has been working on it has already worked on it made a syllabus that architecture will be a subject at the 10 plus 2 level 11th and 12th so that is being worked on and uh, apart from that the the awareness of architecture itself in society has to has to be increased and efforts have to be made by all concerned i mean not only organized institutions like the iia or the coa or the triple id or any any other professional organizations but each one of us in the fraternity has to do this job no, absolutely i been saying this for a long time as to will be for people to understand what is our is all about Right. We think in basic terms, the array who and India and that's the what first you need. They don't understand the importance of life, the importance of the the production of heat and so factors. So the presence of architecture in general is very important. But as compared to you know, there are so many more things. There are so many people. There are so many more things who are talking about architecture. So I think there is a difference. Years ago. It's not known as much as it was. And it needs to be done to create awareness in the normal public of what architecture is all about. Somebody has asked, uh, what about smart cities? Uh, was you know that rollout program happened? Why weren't architects being given a role in that whole smart city rollout program? Uh, I think there were there were consultants empaneled, and the empanelment of consultants did not mandate that qualified architects should be as part of their, you know, uh, team uh, to qualify for being empaneled. So I think that would have helped. Without without going into the details of what the smart city concept or the project was or is, uh, let us understand what smart city entails. See, it's more of an IT driven. Uh, concept rather than infrastructure driven concept so I, i don't want to go into the details of it at all but uh, it, it was more technology driven more it driven rather than the infrastructure and rather than the you know architectural driven and that, that was the reason probably because of that but i think uh, <laughs> i think smart city has been uh, wrongly uh, attached with the definition of it related services only okay, okay. smart city uh, smart city should be encompassing every aspect of your life whether it is you know yeah. your work area your play area your movement right. your society your shops your, actually you know, i i have a i have a say on this can i just come in can uh, can you know, we have we have just one no. minute and the uh, and the webinar uh, will terminate unfortunate right. unfortunately i think smart has got attached with it only 
and the projects, as Mr. Khan said, are probably getting defined on those lines. Whereas the definition should have been encompassing everything. Mr. Khan, would right. you say a last last line to the uh, to generally the architects? Nothing, the nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. All is well, and all is going to be well. Let us let us only concentrate on excelling ourselves, doing good, so that you become indispensable to the society. Very good. Absolutely. So thanks to uh, thanks to J thanks to all the panel JSW Cement for powering this webinar, and um, I was not able to answer many many of your questions. There are lots many I think, but the discussion took a little too long, and I think uh, rightly so. There are you, many aspects. You can share it. We can answer it, you know, online, or we can send you a mail or something. Yeah, this will be I put up as a video, and uh, 